Today is a nice day to try something new. And here on the channel, we've never really solved any integrals involving the fractional part function. So here's one. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of the fractional part of negative log x dx. And for reference purposes, we're going to call our integral i as always. And I'm going to start off with a straightforward substitution by letting negative log x equal to u. Now this implies that x equals e to the negative u. And what about the limits of integration in the u world? Well, as x approaches 0, log x approaches negative infinity. So negative log x, that is the u variable, approaches positive infinity. So that's the lower limit in the u world. The lower limit is positive infinity, which looks quite weird, but we'll deal with that in a bit. And as x approaches 1, then log x, or negative log x, approaches 0. So that means the upper limit in this case is 0. Again, really, really weird. But we'll get this sorted out, as I said. So we have the fractional part of negative log x, which is, of course, u. And the differential element in this case, if we define x by this relation, this implies that dx equals negative e to the negative u du. So we have a negative sign outside, and we have e to the negative u du completing the integration structure. And like I said, we can deal with this uh, strange arrangement of the upper and lower limit. If we switch them up, that is if we write this as an integral from 0 to infinity, it introduces an extra negative sign that cancels out the first one. So that gets rid of the extra negative, and the integral looks a lot more appealing now. So it's the integral from 0 to infinity of the fractional part of u times e to the negative u du. Now this here is a pretty nice structure to evaluate because we can make use of the definition of the floor function, uh, of the fractional function, fractional part function that is. So the fractional part of a real number x equals that real number x minus the integer part of the real number x, which of course is given by the floor function. So this implies that we can write i as the integral from zero to infinity of x, oh sorry about that, we're in the u world. So u minus floor u times e to the negative u du. And of course multiplying out this exponential term and making use of the linearity of the integration operator gives us the integral from zero to infinity of u times e to the negative u du minus the integral from zero to infinity of floor u e to the negative u du. And the first of these integrals is the good old gamma function. This is, of course, gamma 2, which is 1 factorial, which is 1. So this implies that we have i being equal to 1 minus this integral here that I'm going to call i sub 1. So we have, oh, that's a horrible way to write i sub 1 there. So we have i sub 1. And now to evaluate this fascinating structure involving now the floor function. So i sub 1 is the integral from 0 to infinity of floor u times e to the negative u du. And we can decompose this integral structure again using the linearity of the, of the integration operator by noting that the integral from 0 to infinity is in fact equal to the integral from 0 to 1 plus the integral from 1 to 2 plus the integral from 2 to 3 and on and on we go. So this implies that you can write this integral structure as the sum over the non-negative integers k of the integrals from k to k plus 1. So yeah, that does it quite nicely. So all of this implies that you can write i sub 1 as the sum over k of the integrals from k to k plus 1 of floor u times e to the negative u du. And the reason this breakdown of the integral from 0 to infinity is so handy is that because you have the floor function and if you're integrating from k to k plus 1 this means that your real number u lies between k and k plus 1. So this implies that the floor function which returns the integral part equals k. 
So this simplifies our assignment quite a bit. It implies that I sub 1 is in fact equal to the sum over k of the integral from k, uh, the integrals from k to k plus 1 of k times e to the negative u du. And because this k term here is a constant with respect to the u variable with respect to which we're integrating, we can just pop it outside the integration operator and we have a pretty nice and easy integral to evaluate. And finally, this gives us the sum over k. And just integrating this gives me uh, e to the negative u. And to get rid of the extra negative sign because of the division by negative 1, I'm just going to switch up the limits of integration. So the lower limit is k plus 1 and the upper limit is k now. So finally, we can write i as the sum over the non-negative integers k k times e to the negative k minus e to the negative k plus 1. And multiplying out the k term gives you the sum over the non-negative integers k of k times e to the negative k minus k times e to the negative k plus 1. And now we're about to add a 0. And the fancy structure for 0 we have this time is 0 being equal to negative e to the negative k plus 1 plus e to the negative k plus 1. And what exactly and how exactly does this uh, benefit our integration? Well, we can write i, uh, i sub 1, as the sum over k of k times e to the negative k minus k times e to the negative k plus 1 plus this 0. So we have a negative e to the negative k plus 1 plus e to the negative k plus 1. And combining these two terms here gives us negative k plus 1 times e to the negative k plus 1. And this is pretty useful because using the linearity of the summation operator, we now have two sums to evaluate. One is the sum over the non-negative integers k of k times e to the negative k minus k plus 1 times e to the negative k plus 1, which looks like it's going to be pretty easy to evaluate, plus another sum over k of e to the negative k plus 1. And this here is, of course, a geometric series. And this geometric series has a first term equal to e to the negative 1, so that's 1 by e, divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is, again, 1 by e. So multiplying out the denominator and numerator by e gives us 1 by e minus 1. Okay, cool. And this other series here is an example of a telescoping series. And when you expand it, you get some nice results. So if I consider the sum from k equals 1 to n of this structure here, well, this evaluates out to, wait, I have to start my sum at k equals 0. So that gives us for the k equals 0 term, you're left with negative e to the negative 1. Plus now for the k equals 1 term, you have e to the negative 1. Sorry about that. Minus 2 times e to the negative 2. Plus uh, for the k equals 2 term, you have 2 times e to the negative 2. Minus 3 times e to the negative 3. And so on and so forth. Finally, you get to the e to the negative, uh, sorry about that, the n times e to the negative n term minus the n plus 1 times e to the negative n plus 1 term. Okay, cool. And you have these cancellations throughout the summation. And you're only left with negative n plus 1 times e to the negative n plus 1. And taking the limit of this sum as n approaches infinity, and just giving myself some writing space, we see that the answer is zero. So the first sum here evaluates to zero, and the second one is just uh, this term of one by e minus one. So i sub one equals one by e minus one, and recall that your target integral i equaled one minus this integral i sub one. So we have one minus one by uh, e minus one, which implies that i can be written as e minus 2 divided by e minus 1, which is quite a nice result involving Euler's number. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.